Hey, KU fans, welcome back to KU Sports Extra. A little treat here this week, Tom. Two episodes of KU Sports Extra for the KU fans out there. Is that and, well, there as good as it gets? Well, there are two huge games this week, and so far Kansas is batting 1,000, getting West Virginia out of the way, clearing the table, clearing the decks for the moment everyone has been waiting for throughout the nation. Well, let's just say it, throughout the planet. <laughs> the world. The galaxy. Indeed. And that's the rematch of a 109, or as Bernie Sanders would say, 109, 106, triple overtime. <laughs> Victory Perfect. over Oklahoma, and now go to Norman. This is just huge. Yeah, it is huge. And, and there's a lot of good we can talk about in that West Virginia victory, a 10-point victory at home over first place West Virginia. And we will get into it a little bit, but I think it's got to be full-on look-ahead mode. Oklahoma Saturday, 1.30, college game day. <laughs> I'm fired up. Are you? Well, you know, you don't want to look back on that game because then you'll get complacent and you might not write no, as I well. I need to focus. Stay the course. Right? I am fired up. And the cool thing about the road games that are huge is we have five-hour drive to talk about the upcoming game, yeah. to think about it. to Talk about other things. Yeah. Uh, other so things we occasionally there's some do. interesting conversations. Yeah, like KU football. Right. A lot of KU football, that's for sure. Let's see if they could just get five more offensive linemen and one quarterback. Then maybe they could win two games. I mean, we, we don't do that. We do a lot of lists. No. You see some of them online. Yep. Uh, top, top ten coaches. We get Nick Krug involved and, and – he steps from behind the lens and actually gives some input. Very good input. We've done some podcasts with Nick Krug on those. Famous former NFL cheerleaders list. Terry yeah. Hatcher was with the 49ers. Right. Beverly Lynn was with the Eagles. Um, Paula Abdul was with the Lakers as a cheerleader. The NFL Lakers, yep. Yeah. It's, can, you know, there's a lawsuit because the cheerleaders were getting paid so little. Now they're, uh, I think the team won and all the other teams. They were paying them like 25 bucks a game, but it has been a launching pad yeah, for some acting careers, a few of which we just mentioned. No doubt about it. Or in Paula's case, she was a singer more than an actress. Good point. Well, speaking of cheerleaders, let's jump into the good news. The good news is, we kind of talked about it, but uh, KU got back on the top of this race, and, and for Kansas fans, that's obviously the cream of the crop as far as good news goes. I mean, that is what you wanted to see. But it wasn't just the fact that they beat West Virginia. It was the way it happened. I think it was really impressive that they continued to take shot after shot after shot. They'd build a 10- or 12-point lead. West Virginia would knock it all the way back down to two or three. KU would build it right back up all the way to eight, ten points again. I mean, they were really good in the way they responded West, to West Virginia, Virginia never led in that Amazing. game. Amazing. Two games in a row that KU has not trailed. TCU? It's been 102 minutes or something like that since they trailed uh, first half against K-State. Pretty incredible stat right there. That is. So that's obviously good news. And then you, you can't – I don't think we could do Trump this. Trump would point out that he's never trailed in the polls. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I don't think we could do this good news episode if we don't talk about Landon Lucas and how well he played. I think he was fantastic. You agree. And I think you're looking at two of his biggest, biggest critics throughout his career. I, I Nine points, 16 rebounds. Four block shots. 29 minutes. Just an awesome effort. And, and it wasn't just balls falling to him and he's catching them. The, the guy played and dominated stretches of that game. Very good news for KU. He won't be able to keep that up going forward. It's a matchup thing. But maybe he'll get some confidence from that and play like that when he does match up well with the opponent. What's the bad news, Bernie? <laughs> Well, Buddy Heald had 46 points in the 109-106 triple overtime victory. <laughs> Kansas still won, but Buddy Heald is still hot. He never has cooled off. He's like Trump. He just doesn't cool off. So Buddy Heald scored Oklahoma's final 12 points in the comeback Texas. victory versus Texas. So Buddy Heald is a lot to handle. Expert analysis. Buddy Heald is too hot to handle. Unbelievable. Uh, so bad news being that KU has to face him. Somebody's got to yeah. find a way to guard But it's him. really good news for everybody. I mean, great news it, for it, us. It just makes it interesting. It makes it all the more accomplishment if, if Kansas can shut him down and win the game or not shut him down and win the game, as was the case last time. Right, 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 right. Yeah, no doubt. And I, I'm telling you what, I'm, when that Big 12 tournament rolls around, which will be fantastic this year, 
I'm going to go watch every game Oklahoma plays, whether they're playing KU or not. Because Buddy Heald's that kind of guy. You want to watch him as many times in person as you can. That second half against Texas was great. I didn't amazing. see the first half. That's why I'm only commenting on the second hates half. hates the first halves. <laughs> no, it was amazing, though. I mean, the, the, the guy is just so skilled and so smooth. And he, he turns it over. I mean, he had 10 turnovers against Oklahoma turns State. Turns it over game. a ton. He had five against KU, which sounds pretty good in a triple overtime game. But, but he's not afraid to turn it over. But... My God, when you're that kind of a volume guy, you've got the ball in your hands that much. Yeah, you're gonna turn it over. So what he's saying basically, and you gotta love the the spin on his shot. The uh, what's the word? Rotation. I'm rotation. Mm. Join the rotation. <laughs> so good stuff. All right, well let's go into Breakdown Street and talk about both the upcoming game and what we saw in the first meeting. Obviously, triple overtime. I think everybody remembers almost every detail of that game. It was so cool. But, you know, Kadeem Latin steps to the free throw line with two seconds left, tie ball game, and at the end of regulation, all he's got to do is make one free throw, and and Oklahoma probably wins that game, and we don't get that classic, we don't get that thriller. And 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 the streak is dead. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that is something that gets overlooked a little bit, although, again, I think everybody remembers most of the details of that game. But but that definitely got overlooked, and you definitely can imagine that Kadeem Latin – is remembering that very and, well. And he's the one guy who hasn't been starting X number of games. I'm, it was 108 or something. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Or maybe I'm thinking of Marangeli and uh, uh, Hawkinson and, and Zlatnik and all those games. They started together, KU but football. maybe I'm not. Like uh, but anyways, all the, the, the Latin is the fifth starter. The other four have been playing together for so long. Sure. But every time you turn on the TV, Latin is coming from out of nowhere to block a shot with just phenomenal leaping and timing and – He's not real tall, but he can block a shot, and he can get it done down low despite his lack of size. He's playing with incredible confidence right now. He's, he's so active, so athletic, and uh, he seems to be one of those guys from the time KU saw him to right now has improved maybe the most well, on their you team. You know, his whole career, he's just been super hard worker and just gotten better and better and better. He's yeah. just, just a really good story. So, obviously, Buddy Heald is the guy to watch. Everybody knows that, but... Jordan Woodard, too, was on fire. He had a huge game, and maybe it's Cousins' turn to have a huge That's game. That's the thing I was going to say. I think Cousins is playing so well right now. He was 2 for 14 in the field house in that game, and, and if he had been on at all, it could have been an easy Oklahoma win that yeah. night. It wasn't, obviously, and he, he, he struggled. Part of that is credit to the KU defense, but Cousins is really hot right now, and Woodard's not quite as hot, so maybe that evens out. But those three guards right there are, are definitely a handful uh, it'll be a big time challenge for Mason and Graham and Selden to keep those guys in front of them because all three of them, despite being great shooters, all three of them can attack the rim too. Um, Heald and, and Cousins more so than Woodard, certainly. But I, I love this matchup. I think it's going to be a battle. I think it's one of those things where if we don't go down there and see at least one overtime, it's going to kind of feel like a disappointment. You know, 40 <laughs> minutes? That seems boring. I mean, yeah. get in and out for 40 minutes. I'd, I'd like Imagine to see how hard they'll play for just – they only have to play 40 minutes. Can you believe it? Yeah, I know. I think it's going to be great, though. It's, it's a huge, huge game in the race. What happens if KU loses uh, in terms of the race? In terms of the race, well, then Oklahoma clearly has the upper hand on KU because it would be up a game, but – more favorable schedule down the road, too. Yeah, more favorable schedule. Um, yeah, it'll make it tough for Kansas, but you somehow I think Kansas will get a tie for the conference. I was going to say, what happens if KU wins in terms of the race? And then they're the team to beat yeah. again. Yeah, and, and I think everyone will know that, and everyone will start to moan and groan and go, oh, no, we're not going to get The em. key, though, is that the Kansas players don't know that because as soon as they get complacent, they – are not good enough to right. be complacent. Nobody is. Right. It's that kind of year in college basketball. I mean, the number one changes. Losing left and right. Look at Villanova is number one. You know what the score was when Villanova played this Oklahoma team that Kansas is about to go play in Norman? Great question. I don't know. 78-55, to 55, Oklahoma beat Villanova. Wow. And Villanova is number one in the nation right now. Yeah, wow. Oklahoma's played a schedule, huh? Yeah. That's awesome. Good to see. Well... Let's go prediction time. You've been talking about this game a long time. Anybody that's been watching knows who you're going to pick, but go ahead and make it official if you're going to go that route. I'm going to say Kansas 85, Oklahoma 82. I've just felt like this is Kansas's game. Um, you know, the one way to look at it is 
Well, they had to take uh, – it, it yeah. took three overtimes to beat Oklahoma. Of course, that's in Allen Field, us, home court advantage, blah, blah, blah. But also, the other way to look at it is Buddy Heald scored 46 points, and it still wasn't enough to beat Kansas. I'm picking Kansas. <laughs> Good pick. I want to ask you a question before I give my pick. What would you put Buddy Heald's over-under at for total points in this game? Let's say there's no overtimes. Let's just say it's, it's regulation. Uh, I mean – the guy's averaging an ungodly amount. He's not going to score 46 again. No. But I'm going to say 27. Yeah? What would you go, over or under? Over. So, what <laughs> so I? maybe I should have gone higher. <laughs> I would go over. But I, I don't think you can go that much higher. I mean, yeah. 30 points is no joke. And, and, no. You know, so if you set it at 31, I mean, you're, you're, you're talking about a, a ridiculous task. What would you go if you set it at 31? I, I'd probably go over. I think I'd go He's under. So well, good. let's set it at 31. I'm going... He's going over. I'm going under. <laughs> so what are you going? <laughs> Get out and vote. Get out and vote beneath this in the comments. You go. You're going over 31, under. He's going over. I'm going under. <laughs> I'm picking. And the under 31 vote, by the way. <laughs> there you go. Check it out. I'm going to pick Oklahoma. I, I, I just think Oklahoma is so tough, so talented, and they're at home. I mean, uh, this is absolutely no disrespect to KU that, that – Obviously not. Impressed the heck out of me by winning that game in triple overtime. They were tough. They were they were resilient. I mean, there was a lot of good things that happened there, and and, and they sort of righted the ship again after losing three in a row on the road. But Oklahoma going in there, that's tough. I, I know you've had this gut feeling about it all all year, so I think that's great. You stuck with it, but I'm sticking with OU. Um, I also think Kansas is playing better. I know they haven't yeah. faced great competition until the West Virginia game, but I just felt that they were doing the sort of things Extra that hustle, make them good. Like yeah, that. I agree with you. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. So who uh, who was your primetime pick, somebody that you think will be the catalyst to that 85-82 victory? I, I'm going to go Brandon Green again. Uh, I mean, not again, but... Uh, probably so probably the first time <laughs> all year I'm going Brandon Green. You love that guy, though. He plays... For so many reasons. <laughs> Well, he's kind of a lightning rod, and you like to yeah. write about lightning yeah, rods, yeah. let's face it. <laughs> uh, you know, he's a day-to-day -day type. You know, is it a good day for Brandon, or did he get in trouble? Right. Is it, is it a good day for Brandon? Did he hit a couple of threes, or did he just loaf on defense? And and, not or get not the, get off the bench and pout. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of yin and yang. Yeah, there is, and that's what makes him a lightning rod, and lightning rods are interesting as long as you don't get struck by him. Brandon Green did not play, speaking of that, in the Oklahoma game in Norman last year because of a suspension. suspension. The morning of, suspended. Uh, so maybe, just maybe, he's remembering that. He Probably owes not. Him. He owes him two games worth of points. Yeah, there you go. So maybe he is ready for a big game down there. I mean, what's I, I, a big game? What do you think? Why do you well, pick him? That, well, because, uh, I mean, he was embarrassed by the whole thing. Sure. Again. Sure. So he came out and played like a guy, at least at home. He didn't do it in the one minute at TCU, but how could he? he? Knew, <laughs> you know, uh, he played like a guy. He's just so fired up to be back out there, and I think that's enough for him. Maybe there's so little of the season left that it'll be enough for him to go the rest of the entire season without a, a single suspension. Wow. I know that's it saying is, a lot, it is but late or you know almost mid February, so there's a yeah. shot. And, you know, he doesn't take bad shots. No. Because no. there's really no such thing as a bad shot when you're 60% three-point no shooter. No kidding. Or whatever he is, 584, whatever he is. So they'll be looking for him. I just think he has in him like a 16-point breakout That'd game. be cool. I've always thought he's a perfect guy for this team on the road to get going because he takes such pride in shutting people up. And, yeah. and, and on the road is where you want to do that. So, you know, I, I think that... That's a good pick, and I'll tell you what, speaking of, to your point about his energy and coming, coming out with, with you know, the idea of, I guess, apologizing with his play for that, for that K-State debacle, uh, one of the coolest things I saw in that West Virginia game was, first of all, I think everybody hit the board so hard. Lucas, uh, Frank Mason always does, but he did even harder in this one. They really focused Graham on did. that. Yeah, Graham did. Graham got up there exactly for some right. rebounds. And there was one rebound right in front of me that, that – um, Frank Mason got second half, I think. And uh, he, he went up, did his thing, jumped as high as he could jump, ripped the ball out of the air. <laughs> and with bodies all around him, Brandon Green is standing in the paint, 
not jumping for the rebound, just kind of hanging out, looking at it. <laughs> he sees Frank go up and rip that thing down, and he looks at him and goes, yeah! <laughs> I mean, it was, a, it was like... For a rebound, that's a cool. Perfect Brandon Green thing, though, because he was no problem getting fired up enough to support his teammate and be excited about that good thing for Kansas. But he wasn't quite fired it up enough to go for to the go rebound get the himself. Rebound. Exactly. It was, it was just such He is a, a pretty good defensive rebounder, though. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, maybe he, he got wrong-footed or something and couldn't get up for that one. I, I didn't watch the whole thing. I just saw the reaction, and I, I thought, okay, that's pretty cool. That's, that's effort. That's energy like you're talking about. So I like it. I'm going to go with Wayne Selden uh, for, for my primetime pick, and I think that's because he's – been pretty quiet ever since that Kentucky game and I think the bigger the game the bigger the opponent the bigger the moment right now anyway Wayne Selden likes to rise to that he, and he, he's been not, not been a good tournament player so far in his career right but a lot of encouraging big big moments this, this year, year yeah. yeah I mean he, he just he just seems to that he's a guy that has difficulty I think getting himself up for those TCU type games but when it's Kentucky He's got his hood on in the in the tunnel before they come out. You know, he's he's so uh, almost out of body experience type fired up, and I think he'll have the same energy at Oklahoma. And, and he's played well down there before. A couple years ago, he really got going uh, after a little bit of a slump. He hit a bunch of three pointers in that game and and uh, looked really good. So I think he's comfortable in that gym. Wayne Selden is my pick. Brandon Green is Tom's. Let's finish it off with the most obnoxious man in sports. <laughs> Anybody? Anybody? Well, this is actually a pretty easy one. Uh, <laughs> the moment I saw it, and by I, I mean Benton Smith, the producer. You're, you're, the moment you're a he, cis man. <laughs> the moment he told me about this, because I just don't like this guy. <laughs> Papa John storming onto the field and being one of the first ones to hug Peyton Manning. I mean, Papa John. Yeah, I know you think you're cool because you look like KUAD, Shane Zenger. I know that's huge with your friends, and you love to brag about that. But I don't think you should be one of the first faces that we see after this great moment for an all-time, one of the all-time ten great quarterbacks. Two, but fine. (laughs) Uh, So Papa John, you know, Shane Zenger knows his place. It's not on the field. Papa John, you gotta have to uh, take your lead from your doppelganger. 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 Yeah. Okay. And just Shehan stay back. Zenger. And Z. <laughs> it was quite incredible. I mean, Peyton already had the the horde of people leading him out, presumably to Cam Newton to shake hands or the other coach or whatever. And Papa John, your boy. Reached through some people with like a swim move, threw a couple elbows, slapped like Peyton on the shoulder. Like nuns trying to shake the Pope's hand. Yes. Slapped Peyton on the shoulder and made sure that he got the, the man hug in. And maybe uh, even bro some hug. sort of little kiss thing happened. It was strange. Pizza but, breath. You know, hey, to each his own. That's a great pick, though. I love it. I'm going to stick with the Super Bowl for my most obnoxious man in sports this week. And even though I think Cam Newton was unbelievably pouty and pathetic and childish in his reaction and the way he handled himself after the game i'm not going to go with cam newton totally i'm going to go with whoever is put them next to each other for that setup in oh, the NFL. where you could hear chris harris being interviewed while you're being asked questions that's come on this is the nfl the big multi-billion dollar industry it's the super bowl and it's a brand new stadium there's no way they had to force these two teams into some old worn out room where they just had to be back to back with the podiums there's no way that was a a total fail i didn't look up on their website to find out which person was responsible it might have been a several several people but uh, that's terrible and it's the most beautiful chris harris thing that i've ever seen because chris harris is as nice a dude as there ever was he would never taunt someone like that and 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 talk trash on purpose like that i mean he just doesn't do that but If you listen to what Chris Harris was saying, he was just talking about the game plan and how it worked, but he was loud and proud, and that annoyed the hell out of Cam Newton, and I thought that was pretty funny that Chris Harris, you know, if it was Tlaib, I could see. Tlaib's running his mouth over there. There's no doubt he was probably talking trash. We saw some of that. West Virginia's basketball players talk a lot of trash. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, they sure do. They sure do. That's weird, too, with Huggins coaching them. (laughs) Unbelievable. Huggins, what a great answer when I asked if Landon Lucas... Uh, surprised him 
by N- controlling the inside N- game. No. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> he surprised yeah, the heck out of me. Bernie you. Sanders would have given a much better what, answer. What would he have said, and then we'll get out of here? Bernie. Bernie, did Landon Lucas surprise you tonight with the way he controlled things inside? He's strong. <laughs> He's smart. He's a revolutionary. No. Good stuff. Thanks for watching KU Sports Extra. Enjoy KU Oklahoma in Norman. We'll be there. We will. And I can't wait. We'll talk to you guys next week, probably just once. Enjoy this double dip of KU Sports Extra.